welcome to all the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason and in this week's studies we'll be looking at the cross and also salvation. And today we started looking at scriptures in relation to the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. We start at St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, and beginning at the 31st verse. And after that they had mocked him. They took the robe off him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, say thyself, If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. The cross is central to an understanding of the Christian faith. Yet, there is so much in these days which looks to deny the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there is an offence with the cross. There is that which human nature sees as repulsive, sees that it cannot accept the God himself, the Son of God, God the Son, should actually be nailed to a cross. A cross which is a curse, for cursed is everyone that hangs on a cross. And yet this was the way of God, that way, way back in the mind of God, this was the only way that he could reconcile lost, guilty, and already condemned sinners with himself, the Holy God, the Holy One. And we're on very sacred ground when we are considering these great, great truths of God the Son laying down his own life to take the place of those who were cut off from from the Holy God himself. Yet God, he commends his love towards us, towards you and towards all others, in that whilst we were yet yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. It appears, it would appear to the human mind that this was a great defeat. But yet in the schemings of God, the ways of God, this was the greatest victory that this world will ever know. Because through his death, Jesus reconciled to the holiness of a holy God. those who could do nothing at all themselves. Lost in trespasses and sins. But here we are. Jesus, deity, Jesus God, submitting himself into the hands of wicked men. Yet men who were being used in the purposes of God himself. Isn't that something quite astounding, quite amazing, that it's God himself who should bring this about? in order to open the floodgates, open the gates whereby through that divine blood the whosoever will come to be reconciled with God can come. It's no wonder that J.C. Ryle, Bishop J.C. Ryle, the first bishop of Liverpool, place such great emphasis that there is no other name on earth given among men that we might be saved because without the shedding of blood and not just any blood but the blood of God there's no forgiveness of sins that's why the cross had to be necessity because when someone is nailed to that cross, as Jesus was nailed to that cross, his blood, the blood of God, dripped to the ground. And it was that perfect offering which opened the way, which brought about a bringing together of God and the repentant sinner. Deep, deep truths there. Sacred truths. Nothing light-hearted there. No mocking. Yes, there was mocking from those around the cross. But in these days, Oh, can we take it in? Can you take it in? That it was God nailed to that cross, taking your place, taking upon himself all the wrath, all the condemnation, all the judgment, that God had against man in order that man, and that includes woman, could be brought back to himself and receive the very nature, the very life of God within them. When Jesus had triumphed 
over the powers of hell, of Lucifer, of Satan, of the devil, and every, every demonic force, spirit, that there's ever been and still are. He's triumphed because of his blood. Made an open show of the principalities and powers of darkness. He's victor. He's Lord. But it cost him everything. Have you thanked him enough today for what he's done? Let us move on and see how this, what Jesus had to say to his, in his teaching, even before he went to the cross. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, and from verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother, and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That is very, very, very clear there. Cannot be. Not that he might be, or she might be, but cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross. So, there's a cross that Jesus had, died upon. And there's a personal cross to those who come to the Father through him. Because the cross means death, certain death. Jesus had to accept certain death. And that death is, is his. Has to be, become part of the, the new life of the believer. Because the believer cannot enter into life, eternal life. Cannot enter into the divine life of God. Cannot receive the life of God. Unless it is first dead. And it is the cross, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. It is his life, and no longer our own life. And it's seeing that it is the cross that brings about this outworking of the death within us. His death outworked in us to bring his life, the new life, the life of God within, not outside of us, but within us. And for which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and count of the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Yes, considering that when he come to Christ, you come to Christ. When you came to Christ, maybe many years ago you came to Christ, you may not have come to him yet. But there's a cost, and it is the death of the Lord Jesus being outworked within us. Lest haply after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Count the cost. It's nothing trivial here. It, cost, it will cost you everything if it's not already done so. Because Jesus is looking for what? He's looking for a complete surrender to himself. Not a self-life. Not a life which is outside of him, a separate life to him. But it's not your life, it's his life. When you are dead, when the cross is being outworked through you, it brings death, death to the world, death to self, death to the flesh. 
a life, the life of God himself within. There's no life, there's no birth. His life, as what it is, is his scripture, or the teachings of man, or the teachings based on the word of God. And Jesus, he did not make it easy. Nothing here of the Alpha Course. Nothing here which seeks to what? Put the person first instead of God first. This is a heart relationship with the living God. Being born again, being regenerated, having seen that it was your sin, my sin, which compelled Jesus to have to die upon that cross. A nasty thing is sin, because it is rebellion against God. And only the cross and the blood of Jesus could deal with it. Count the cost. Because when you are truly born again of God, you will never be the same again. When you are seeing Calvary and Jesus on that cross, you will never be the same. When you have seen your sin as that which Compel Jesus to go and be nailed to that cross. You will never be the same. There will be nothing light about it. Nothing trivial about it. It is the power of God to salvation. The almighty God outworking his plan. And only his plan could bring about that reconciliation because it was your sins which drove Jesus to the cross. Count the cost. The cost to him and in the light of the cost to him It is that it will be that I, you, will give him our all. Because, let's see now, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing to glory in in this world. Nothing to glory in himself. Because the human heart is corrupted to the core. It needs a no heart, a no birth, a no life. And it cost my Lord. It cost my Jesus, my God, every drop of his blood at that cross. By whom the world is crucified. The world means nothing. When he comes in, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in, you go out. This is true Biblical Christianity. Oh, 
Are you prepared to go all the way with him? He went all the way for you. He didn't 99.9% uh, .9 go for you. He went 100%. And it's being crucified with him. And the world then is nothing. The world, the flesh and the devil. They have been utterly and completely defeated by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ at his cross. And they shall be nothing to you. Is the crucified Christ being brought you to that place where you are crucified to the world? That the world has no hold upon you. The flesh life has no hold upon you. Sin has no hold upon you. Because the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ over sin is being outworked through you. It is his life, his divine life, of, the life of holiness and purity and righteousness being lived in you, through you, to the glory of God the Father. You can't do it of yourself. Can't do it through works. Can't do it through the, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, because it what it depends upon the crucified life of Christ being that cross within you so that you can receive the divine nature. You will never receive the divine nature through works. It's by grace. And that's and that alone is that which you can boast in. Not anything of yourself, not anything of the church, but in Christ alone. And Christ not on the cross, but, but at the right hand of the majesty upon high, the right hand of the Father, having all authority in heaven and earth. Philippians 2 and verse 8, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He humbled himself. God humbled himself. And it's through humility, the humility of Christ, that when we're born again, when we come into the kingdom of God, we're not going to get in his way. We don't want anything for ourselves. We want him and him alone. That is humility and it's not humility of the human nature. Human nature doesn't have humility. Human nature wants itself. It's a divine nature which is humility. Being prepared. Have thy way, Lord. Have thy way. I'm just a vessel in thy hands. Do what you want to do. And for the glory of the Father. And for today, let's see Yes, another one. Just a little bit more time. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you. Even weeping. There's Paul weeping. He'd seen Calvary. That they are the enemies of what? The cross of Christ. And anything which wants to come to God and bypass the cross. He is not of God. And as Paul, he wept. 
because there were others who were making a mockery of the cross of the Lord Jesus. And in these days too, anything which is of the other Jesus which does not accept the cross and the blood of the cross is not of God. And finally for today, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, all things are there to be reconciled, but not all choose to be reconciled to God. God has given a choice. All are predestinated and can come to God, but not all choose to come to God. Because they choose either to reject God or they choose to try and come to God with, without the blood and without the cross. What is missing in these days? The great truths of the word of God based on, on the cross. The substitutionary offering of God the Son through his own blood as the only means of reconciling repentant sinners with a holy God. Father, thy word speaks so clearly about the cross of thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the necessity of his blood to be offered as an atonement for sin. But yet how many in these days will not preach on the cross or the blood? And how many Bibles look to take out the necessity of the cross and the blood? O oh God in thy mercy Bring the preaching and the teaching of these great truths of the cross and the blood of Jesus. Once more, bring them back as it were to life within the teachings of true Bible-based Christianity. For this is asked through the one who gave his life the Lord Jesus Christ, and for your glory, and for your glory alone. Amen.